kind of like the uh, I would I would want to say like the time after the baby boomers or, or before that, like the '90s, because like there was a bit of the Earth, Wind, and Fire had its own jazz to it, and I mean some of them as of now, like Lucas Graham, like his, the first record, the Seven Year Song, you know that was a bit inspiration. You know anything that has a connection. I feel like the band is rooting back to like the older days because it it has some sort of you 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 you're connecting with uh in uh you're connecting with individuals on a different level. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of Set Lesson Bruce, your podcast all about Bruce Springsteen, his music, and mostly his fans. I am your host, Jesse Jackson. Uh, joining me today as we get off the Bruce Springsteen train, but he will come up as he normally does, uh, is a return guest. Uh, Himanesh Goel is returning on the, as we record this, freshly graduated young man. How are you doing today, sir? I'm good. How are you? I am good. So you finally got the graduation, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I graduated, but I haven't got the, um, our gra- we had to see our graduation virtually, so. <laughs> yeah, I bet that was weird. Mm-hmm. And that's, you know, that's one of the sad things uh, I've talked about. We've talked about this in the podcast before that, you know, there's a lot of things that, not only are we going to mourn the people that we've lost because of this pandemic, but we also have to mourn the the things we lost, the the high school proms, the college graduations, the family reunions, the things that we weren't able to do over these past two years that normally we would do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and um, that's true. And the same thing happened with my high school graduation yeah. <laughs> as well. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, so remind everyone, uh, give them a little, remind everyone a little bit about yourself and, mm-hmm. uh, tell us where you graduated from. Yeah. So, so I'm him, I'm him and Goel, and I, I was majoring in information systems with a certificate in human center design from the VCU school of business and the VCU da Vinci center. So I've graduated from both areas, the da Vinci center and that was for I mean that was in terms of like a certificate but the main big 80 percent 95 percent of the piece was from the school of business so that's where I graduated um but yeah that's that's the story (laughs) now it's just having to get now it's like after getting out of this academia world after what because we've been a lot as students we've been you know learning and doing courses ever since we were when we came out of when we started walking from day one to the day we finished our college degree so it um and the other fact was that I was actually supposed to graduate next year in May but I did it a year early um because the pandemic was I took it as a way as in terms of like we're not going anywhere so why not use it in a way where I can get out early by um taking advantage of it so that is great and congratulations uh, i know i join uh, i know you your friends and your family are all really proud of you so what's next what what are you, what's what do you want to be now that you're grown up at least <laughs> you, your first phase of growing up um well as of right now i'm still deciding um there's still a couple of um what do you say? There's still, there's still a couple of decision opponents to make. So, yeah, not um, not as sure as of right now. So uh, you don't have a new job to go to starting next Monday or anything. So, 
as of right now yeah okay good um are you do you are you are you wanting to move are you wanting to stay kind of where you're located or you're just open to whatever opportunities come your way and then you're open to doing whatever yeah i guess uh, yeah depending on what comes my way and like the opportunities that i get i think um gonna see where that takes me so okay. well good that's exciting and and i wish you the best so uh you know we had a great time visiting before you shared a little bit about your um you know as i mentioned in the episode we sent out you know your feet in both Eastern and Western music, uh, and you've kind of enjoyed, you go back and forth, you talked about it, but you reached out and you said you'd want to join me again. So um, let's let's talk about, uh, you know, your love of music and, and some of your favorite bands, right? Yeah, so I mean, funny you mentioned this because the, well, my love of music, I guess, in terms of band, you know, they are like the 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 high class performing artists, like the Maroon Five and the One Republic. But I guess from the the types of bands that I've personally liked, from like the music that has developed over the years, I guess it would be somewhere around kind of like the uh, I would, I would want to say like the time after the baby boomers or or before that like the 90s because like there was a bit of the earth wind and fire had its own jazz to it the um what was some other bands that i'm trying to think of and i mean some of them as of now like lucas graham like the first record the seven year song you know that was a bit inspirational you know anything that has a connection I feel like the band is rooting back to like the older days because it, it has some sort of um, you, 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 you're connecting with uh, in, uh, you're connecting with individuals on a different level. I mean, as for like a five seconds of summer being like that, the antique boy band, it's it's more of quality over quantity. Like I personally, I mean, some folks like specific songs of them some know them by the song of bang uh it's called ajr but if you look at their discography it's not i mean they've put out some good content in terms of like as a a band i mean they didn't start it as well as as they expected but they developed over the years and they kept pushing and um finding boundaries for themselves and i like the way they've piece their craft um so it varies from band to band these days because some come with the like i like the older imagine dragons more than the newer one because the taste that they've brought to the table is a i i personally don't see them in that viewpoint <laughs> um why don't you see them that way imagine dragons yeah yeah, what you you mentioned that what yeah what, yeah. So like right now they had a song called "Follow Me" and it's from their new album Mercury and I okay. think Mercury Act One, it's it's on pre order on iTunes. But their previous albums, there was there was a certain sound that you would wait for and you knew they would they would hammer it the right way every single time. I mean, yeah, they got. Um, they got help from Rick Rubin, which is one of the biggest rock producers of all time. And it's, just, you know, when they started with Night Visions and the EP Continued Sounds, they were, you know, the songs of It's Time, Demons, Radioactive, On Top of the World, or Tiptoe, they all had some sort of rhythm you could go with it. You could, it kind of felt like there was a dragon beat, like you could see them in that image. Smoke and Mirrors, there are a couple of songs that I like. It's not their, their best, but it's passable. And then you see something like Evolve, where it's like, a, just like it's another version of Night Visions just on a different level. Yeah, like there, there were songs like Thunder and all that, but that wasn't really what I was going for. It was more of the, 
believer and uh, I forgot <laughs> whatever yeah whatever it takes and like so those songs and anything that they've included in that experience you could then relate back and then origins came out with like um, natural and bad liar and what not you can not imagine which also added to the experience of evolve it because it felt like they were making like a two-part experience that way and the first four you, as a as a as imagining as the dragon those beats felt like it represented them and i feel like if you can as the band as like when you're creating the music, you can you can create a record that represents yourself or something or a bigger picture than that. Everyone will remember five, seven, 10, 12 years on the line. It's still relatable. Like as of now, to this date, I still listen to Night Vision songs because they're relatable. I can still go. I because that was that Night Visions was the perfect representation of who they are. And they did a very well job to hammering that into the system. But the, the new song, like Follow You and what they've been up to lately, people see them in that view. I mean, I'm not saying the song is entirely bad. I just don't, I, I just can't see them in that viewpoint. I mean, the, the past four albums that they did were much more better than the new single and record that they're trying to create. Um, and it, I mean, it's an act one. I don't know how many acts they're looking to create. Yeah. So, <laughs> and, you know, I also think it's, it's always interesting when artists try to move forward and, and to try different things. Um, you know, you, you want, you want your artists to be um, pushing themselves artistically uh, to try mm -hmm. different things. Now, you may not like sometimes the new things, but you can respect that they're trying to do something different artistically, right? Yeah, that's yeah. true. And, and who's a good example? Like, like right now, everyone knows how Bruno Mars, every album he did, he always put some type of experiment. And it was not like everyone was like pop certified. It, I mean, that's the beats he's familiar with, but he, it's not, that's what wasn't always his aim. You know, he started with the dupes and Hooligans, slowly progressed, prog progressed to unorthodox jukebox and then made his big, big definition moment with Uptown Funk. And that's what led him to creating the 24K Magic. And he was usually, I mean, it depends from artist to artist. I mean, it doesn't apply to everyone, but he, took the move of going from being a solo artist to just, um, what would you say? What's the name? To, to like creating um, a, a group with Anderson Pack and um, that ended up becoming Silk Sonic. And he now is trying to create a different vibe. So I feel like the more this whole new concept that I guess, I mean, maybe it was there before, but in today's generation, people only see it through how Taylor Swift has done it because she's bounced from one genre to the one to another to like from back and forth. I feel like that has become a new way of exploring different ideas. If you don't, if you don't want to just stick with one, you know, you might be great in that area. Like Ed Sheeran started as a singer songwriter, and then he moved to pop with Divide. And um, it's not bad. I mean, as as I said, like I like his previous records much more better. So mm -hmm. it, it just depends. the The challenge with the new record is you have to make it feel like it's a part of your discography. The moment it doesn't feel like it's sound, it's not that you the world you're trying to create is not in your viewpoint. It becomes hard for the person to see you in that. And that's a prime example of why Jason Derulo only stopped at a certain album. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you remember, but his first two albums, I mean, you could literally see him in that. I mean, 
his debut album, you know, the What You Say song, and then Future History just blew up with um, It Girl. I, I mean, I used to listen to the radio song, like my favorite songs or anything, but when he at the, his third album was a difficulty because the US folks could relate to it, but the UK related even more. So he released his, his, his the, the name of his actual album is called Tattoos, but he only released that in the UK and he created a different experience with different tracks, something that's more relevant to, um, to the US society and named that off his popular single called Talk Dirty. And so that was the third album for the US and he pivoted and made that a special edition, you know, they, that's how like artists do it because when they have new songs, they um, they'll just pivot towards that because he wanted to stay relevant in the U.S. but also maintain the fans in the U.K. And so you know he was pretty busy from 2013 and 14, but that helped him um, pivot. So and then after that, he just created created one world out al- one whole album which uh, which was which was on both sides, so which was everything is for. And after that, I don't know, he he did, come, he had the best way for artists to find their next image is through singles. If the single is popular enough that they feel like people can see that in the specific viewpoint, they will release it and they'll put it, at, they'll put it out as that. But if they think it doesn't, then they, um, they tend to fall back on something else and they'll try it a different um they'll try it something else you know and and mm-hmm. this is and i've seen drake do this a lot you know he'll if there's singles that he feels like are good enough for his album he'll release it but otherwise he ends up creating like a compilation album and sometimes a compilation album uh turns out to be even better i know that i don't mm, what I don't know what a time to be alive. I don't know some uh, one before that before his views album, he he said that I didn't expect it to do extremely well, but he said I could I would have definitely made that my studio album. So sure. you know they sometimes your risks turn into successes that you don't know of, and I think that's the beauty of music because some know how the image is interpreted like now the only thing you see jason Dula doing is making singles to find his uh next sound um whereas one republic they went really well with the first three and the fourth one there were some songs that related not the entire album but um yeah now when they're trying to come back with their new album which is human it's hard because, and I'm not even joking, that album cover, when Rescue Me worked for them and wanted, they decided to put out the album and the album cover, and it was supposed to release in December 2019, I think. Yeah. And, and, and they moved it to June. Then they moved it to December 2020. And then they moved it to um, May of 2021 and now it's now it's a december 2021 and it's like they've never gotten to release it and i'm not sure if they want to if they're not releasing it because they want to go on tour or if they're not releasing it because they're struggling to find a really successful song because right people all be they all be have like four tracks on there that everyone knows of and i mean Uh the, the thing with pre-orders is you don't want to be so late because then slowly you start to fade away. Yeah. Um, um, because he really, I, I know he released a, a, a song from the new Bond Republic album and it was, it was in the, it, it was pretty popular for, for some time. And I think it's still on the charts, but you know, it's when you extend it too long, the vision kind of dies down because people know what to expect. And that's what happened with Sam Smith, except he reinvented it and it didn't turn out to be that bad. It was, it was successful. So, so um, I don't know if you remember, but when he had like 
the uh, How Do You Sleep or Dancing with a Stranger song, his the album was first called To Die For. Uh-huh. And when that and when that people didn't really see that that album was in pre-order, they didn't really see that in, in his image. He was trying to create like a a fashion show type of album when people didn't really see his Sam Smith as that. He was more of like um the 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 male version of uh, Adele from the voice that he sings. Sure. And then what he did was he just scrapped that all out, record was in the studio recording other songs and just came back with a new perception. So, you know, you, because pre-orders are only meant to last for a certain time. After that, you know, it's up to the audience if they like, if they want to like it or not. Yeah. So it sounds like you have a wide range of, of music you enjoy listening to. Uh, mm-hmm. a, a lot of uh, pop, a lot of uh, hip hop, just different things. What, what, what drives w- when you go, oh, I like that. Can you, is there something specific that um, you go, oh yeah, this is, this is something I really like. Yeah, so um, it used to be that first it, it, it used to be like depending on the pop song I'd really enjoy it, but now yeah. it's more around singer songwriter or alternative songs where okay. yeah, I mean there is the Billie Eilish, but she's starting to be considered more pop star than she is as an alternative star yeah. because it, it's just the frame of like how any successful artist in another genre just ends up being the new pop star. So, Uh I mean, like when Taylor Swift took the pivot to going from country to pop and finally landing herself an alternative, I liked her alternative voice where some folks like uh, other genres more than those. Like Uh folks really like the pop and country voice. Some did, a lot of folks did like her alternative voice, but I personally like um, the not the not the re-release of her Fearless album. I think yeah. it's I don't know if I'd want to say it's um, what's the folklore. I it that that does have some good songs, but I personally like Evermore better. Okay, so she you know that when she came up with that first new song. Um, I don't remember the name now. It's been a while since I've listened yeah. to it, but that had a connection where I could be like, okay, that that's I can see that being a thing. So, um, like when she was singing "The Willow," that was the name of the song. You could see her trying to explain this journey, whereas in the um, card whatever the the popular song in folklore was called she she kind of spinned a pop a little bit of like a, a pop genre twist to it so you know i like when they make experiments as simple as they can because it shows that you're pivoting uh-huh. um that you're not just um you know you're you're not saying the same voice like taking an example like the weekend it feels like every single one of his albums are pretty much the same and you can tell what genre it is but all he does is he changes the beats up and people and you know it'll work it works because you know singles like the weekend kanye west um trying to think who else is what comes in that in that category uh or like even like the the da baby you know, mm-hmm. being on a continuous loop, using the same beats, experimenting, or just kind of making that um, people understanding what type of songs you're gonna give. You know, how is how, how are you gonna interpret it in your viewpoint? Is it's all great, but after a certain point, it becomes a bit repetitive. Yeah. But some folks do like repetition, so I personally don't um enjoy that as much got it Mm -hmm. so yeah so if um 
how do you find new artists? Um, do you do you get yeah, are are you um, by friendship by you know recommendations from friends? Are you uh, listening to like the college radio station? How how are you finding new uh, music? Yeah, so I would find new music either from word of mouth um, or from folks that have a different taste in music. And yeah. at that point you might be like, why would they listen to this? Because everyone listens to different music. Now people enjoy YouTube artists at this point as well. Yeah. So trying to pitch it and see if they like it. And eventually I've, I've had, I, I've been in situations where people are like, you know, you know, like, you know this, this artist did extremely well now. I mean, you know, he just blasted off and whatnot. You know, yeah. I remember, listening to Olivia Rodrigo who is now doing extremely well with her musical career before that um before I think when she was in the high school musical series before releasing her first album or even mm -hmm. further down before that yeah she she would release a couple of her songs that she'd sing on um what was that platform <laughs> she'd release a couple of her songs on just on like on her Instagram account or any social media platform. Yeah. And people just used to listen to that continuously or the song that you released to Disney and you should be like, oh, I mean, uh, I didn't, ex I didn't see she would, I didn't expect her to make a huge success out of it. But yeah. when driver's license came out, it just, it just raged at the top of the moment. And this was like, just the first single and I was like and I didn't see why people were liking it and I think because it was a different sound no one thought of and mm -hmm. she started being interpreted as a younger version of Taylor Swift so okay. you know then that becomes a huge deal at that point you know that oh okay you know she's being viewed in this scenario you know Taylor Swift who's one of a kind um right but and then if you and I don't know if you know this but on her well her her first debut album which is still top on the charts which is called sour uh -huh. if there's a song called good for you and if you there's a song that the, the type of sound that's in that song it's very similar to one of the songs that param paramore released okay. i don't it was from the album of riot um I don't know which, what was the name of the song, but um, the, it's, it, it, had, it was Misery Business. That's what it was. It was a 2007 single yeah. from Riot. And it, it that, that rock beat and where she's saying, you know, good for you continuously. And it's like, there's also that pop smash into it. That's the exact same thing that, Haley Williams did when she was recording Riot in 2007. Yeah. So a lot of the times artists will find songs that they like and try to recreate it in their voice in a different style. Um, yeah. So that is something that it's kind of, you know, a, re a, a reprise of a song, but mm -hmm. kind of not. Be because I even see this in my own... Um, in in my in the in my music like there's as there's Hollywood there's Bollywood but in the types of music that they do over there they've been having a lot of remixes where they'll take the old songs and just remix that only problem with that is if they've overdone it where people yeah. they've been successful remixes but at one point people you know they get over it that okay you've done so many you know how many old songs are you gonna get and just reprise it or like make like a cool beat and more relevant yeah. so. I mean, it's great and all, but uh, I feel like there should be a balance between both. You know, it shouldn't just tend to go to lean to one direction versus versus the other. Then versus the other. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, um, what uh, what are you excited about? What are you looking for to hearing next? Mm. 
you know, after I mean, I feel like this whole pandemic, I've seen there have been a lot of new artists that have been doing extremely well, you know, with Billie Eilish and Olivia Rodrigo being at the top and Silk Sonic with Anderson Park and new music and the, yeah. the, 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 the baby and Dua Lipa's new sound and she being a whole new and she being like the new star on the block with mm-hmm. two back-to-back successful albums. Yeah. I feel like 2020 was a lot of dance, creative, musical talent that was being presented. Um, there was like a wide array of um, sounds, you know, from yeah, uh, um, from like a disco 90s pop, but more relevant to you know, listening to uh, an album like um, Folklore by Taylor Swift in a new voice. I feel like there was a lot that had been offered. And now this year, it, it feels like there's now a lot of more dance music these days and a lot of yeah. um, some artist reflection like Justin Bieber has with his new album, Justice. So, yeah. I mean, and a lot of, I mean, with rap, the thing is some years are good over the others. And I think this year is starting to get better because there's some new songs that, that are doing well. And with Kanye West coming out, people mm-hmm. are just getting ex- yeah. overly excited. So um, that, I mean, I, it, will I listen to it? I don't know. Um, but, you know, that's, that's, that's the meat of the game. So I guess right now, I know Jack Antoff, who's been working with Taylor Swift and Lana Del Rey and been producing music with them, which mm-hmm. have been winning Grammy Awards. I'm really interested in hearing his music because he's obviously, he obviously has helped Lorde and her new album, Solar Power, which yeah. I'm really keen to looking forward to hers because she started her journey with Royals and team yeah. and then went to um, her second album, which was more of a, kind of, uh, it was like meh. Um, and I know there was a song called Green Lights in there, but it was like yeah. more, it was like melodrama, if I'm not wrong. So, he he gives a good twist to how he represents these artists and i feel like with his new bleachers album coming up after and after the the band fun collapsing from amazing songs like we are young some nights yeah i would i'm interested in seeing what what does he offer what does he have to offer with the the bleachers music so you know I, I don't know what the future awaits because I mean we definitely have new artists in the in the in the in the pandemic era. Yeah. So you know you never know because a lot of the times when there there's similar artists' voices that we're always hearing, like Ariana Grande being the new kid on the block in 2015 and Demi Lovato being there. Mm-hmm. And now the Jonas brothers reprising themselves in 2018, uh-huh. something like yeah. that. You know, it's like, uh, you, you don't know what to, it, it's, you never know who's going to come back. You know, they have sure. th- th- things, you, people are working on things silently and, you know, they just release it all of a sudden. So, I mean, you could be talking about, a, I don't know, they could, they, they could be a possibility of like a, um, a black eyed, <laughs> black eyed peas reunion. And, and I mean, yeah. they're, they're new album the translation which came in the pandemic i thought they did an extremely incredible job pivoting wise yeah after coming from the beginning they the the new album masters of the sun felt like a very felt extremely similar to the end the energy never dies and that that album was 10 times better than the one they recorded with this and and i know they didn't have uh one of the artists fergie so you know that definitely did make an impact yeah. but what they did was they decided to take pop and latino music and do something together and the first single being featured on bad boys you know 
that might have definitely helped them because that might have caught some attention. But they, you know, those types of pivots are the ones I'm really interested in seeing, you know, like a translation or the, the Evermores or, you know, those are the ones that are kind of the masterpieces down the line, just like how David Gord is nothing but the B turned it, turned it to be something much more. I mean, now he's, he's been a bit repetitive with like Listen and all the other albums that have come out, but um, just looking for that golden age. Like they were, yeah. and they've been, so, they've been some disappointments where I've been like, man, I wish that artist had released it, but they didn't. Like when Usher came out of looking for myself, there were some albums that I liked over others. And then the looking for myself, it was, yeah, I mean, it was good. It wasn't bad. It wasn't so bad. When he released his new single, like Good Kisser, Never uh, Don't Mind, or like there was one song he did with Pharrell Williams and Nicki Minaj, but, the, you know, he was giving a totally new experience that I was looking forward to because I enjoyed that type of music he was, he was trying to present. Um, it felt like he was presenting a, something along the lines of like 870 except in a different sense yeah that album never got released though <laughs> only the singles did so i i mean they were there were rumors that it was going to be named this or that but it never came out and what he ended up doing was he ended up giving a similar sound to looking for myself which did well but it it, it wasn't like a pivot you know sometimes mm-hmm. That also happens where the artist is trying to pivot, but they lose the sound. But I mean, I, those three singles are still out there. Yeah. But so, I mean, it would have been better to hear that full experience. And yeah. sometimes, and sometimes it takes like a pandemic to for an artist to pivot. Such as, um, if you remember Justin Bieber when he first began, his sound, his music was a bit similar. He, I mean, he was making pivots. I mean, from my world to point of believe or whatnot. And I mean, purpose was the big pivot. But yeah. he was going through a lot of um, other problems as well. That changes sent since a little bit similarity to what purpose was, but it did well. Yeah. It was only when justice came that it really felt like he made a different music where he was exploring something around what was what drake was trying to explore i'd I'd, like reggae music a bit of pop here just like mixing it and getting a different experience and so that one i think is my favorite one of his best comebacks out of his uh the phase that he's come out of so well good you know um I, i i love your passion i love how much you enjoy this um it was so much fun catching up um if someone wants to reach you what's the best way to do it yeah i mean if some if someone wants to reach uh reach out to me and just get to know what i'm doing i think the best way to do that would to be through finding my name on linkedin okay or you can find me on uh, reddit okay and um I'm not as active on Facebook or Instagram, but I do yeah. have accounts. Okay. And I even I even have a photography page, which is that, which is which isn't that active at, like it used to be, but there okay. is some ph- photography content on there. So all right, we will check it out, and I will include the link to your LinkedIn profile, like we did last time. Himesh, this was great. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate it. Congratulations on graduation. Uh, I'm excited to see what you're going to do next. Yeah, (laughs) Uh, you know, please keep me posted and uh, you have a great uh, rest of the summer. Yeah, thank you. You you, to you as well. You know, um, just keep making the pivots with your podcast. Well, I will do my best. And listeners, you go get vaccinated. Let's um, remember to put on your masks and let's all take care of each other. Because that's the only way we're going to get through this. For now, thank you, and we'll talk to you soon. Goodbye. Doing a podcast at times can be a one-way conversation, and I hate that. So please let me know what you like and don't like about the work I'm doing. 
You can reach the podcast via email at setlessingbruce at gmail.com. The show is on Twitter at setlessingbruce, and my personal Twitter is at Jesse Jackson DFW. We have a website, www.setlessingbruce.com. From there, you can find links to other Springsteen podcasts as well as other music themed podcasts. We have a page devoted to our own SLB All Star Band. These are guests who have been on the podcast more than three times. There is a link to our store where you can purchase Set Lessing Bruce shirts as well as a Mary Question t shirt. There is a link to our Patreon page where you can sign up to help support the podcast financially. We have different levels and different rewards based on your support. If you don't have any extra cash, and right now who does, you can support the podcast by subscribing via your favorite podcast player and leaving us a review. The more reviews we have, the easier it is for people to find us. And please tell a friend about the podcast, especially if they love Bruce or music, because it will make a difference. You just heard the fun talking, hard rocking, music loving, album ranking, fan thinking, joy spreading, lyric reading, story sharing podcast that is the one, the only, that listening Bruce. The theme for Set Lessing Bruce was written by David Rosen, used by permission.